Hi, dear classmates. Welcome back to the delay testing chapter. In the previous video, suppose that we already generated a set of test patterns. Now, in this video, we want to for simulate these test patterns and calculate the fault coverage. In this video, we are going to introduce two techniques. The first one is enumerated method proposed by Smith in 1985. And the second technique is a non-enumerated method proposed by Pomeres in 1994. As you can see, the second method is more difficult than the previous method. So it was nine years later than the first technique. Before we start the discussion of force simulation, we would like to know what kind of logic system we are going to use in this video. Remember, we use the 9 value logic for path sensitization in video 9.2. In the 9 value logic, we use S0 and S1 for steady 0 and steady 1 respectively. We use RF for rising and the falling. We use 0 star, 1 star for steady 0 hazard and steady 1 hazard. And we use U1, U0 and the double X for the case of unknowns. But in this force simulation video, suppose that we assume all inputs are fully specified. So we actually don't have to consider the case of unknown. So we can remove these three logic values so that we are left with only six value logic for force simulation. This is a good way to reduce the number of states. But please know that we still keep the logic value 0 star and 1 star for force simulation. This is because we want to consider the non-robust sensitization condition. For example, on the right hand side we show a 6 by 6 logic table for the two input and gate. Consider this path. The on path signal is a falling transition and the off path signal has a rising transition. This is a non-robust sensitization condition. So the output can be a static zero hazard as we can see from this truth table. Now, let's introduce two techniques of force simulation. The first one is enumerative method. The good news about enumerative method is that the algorithm is very simple. But the bad news is that users need to provide a pass delay for this. This can be very difficult because the number of pass delay for can be worst case exponential. So, how can we find a good pass delay for list? Typically, designer use static timing analyzer STA to find a list of long paths. But this may not be very representative since the pass list can be only a small portion of total pass. So the problem of enumerative method is that the simulation for coverage may not be representative. The second technique is non-enumerative method. The good news about this method is that users don't need to provide any for list. However, the algorithm is more complicated and the simulation for coverage can be pessimistic. Please see FFT for more details. Now, let's introduce the enumerative method. Given a test set and uh, a pass delay for list, the enumerative method simply performs three steps to calculate the fault coverage. Step number one, perform six valid logic simulation. Step number two, count the number of sensitized paths in the four list. Step number three, 
calculate the full coverage. Here is an example. Given this ISCAS 85 C17 benchmark circuit, suppose we have a tap pattern where A is a falling transition, B is steady 0, C is steady 1, D is falling, H is rising. We are also given a list of free pass delay faults. Please calculate the robust fault coverage. In step number one, we first perform a six value logic simulation as is shown in this picture. And then in step number two, we trace every pass in the fault list. If every gate on the pass are robustly sensitized, then this pass delay fault is robustly detected. So let's consider the first pass delay fault where D, E, G, J, K, all gates on this path are robustly sensitized. So this pass delay fault is robustly detected. Let's consider a second pass in the fall list, H, J, K. This NAND gate is robustly sensitized and this is also robustly sensitized. So H, J, K pass delay 4 is also robustly detected. Now consider the third fall, B, M, N, L. This pass delay 4 is not robustly sensitized, so it's not detected. Now, we have detected two out of the three pass delay faults in the fault list, so the robust fault coverage is 99.7%. Now it's time for you to do an exercise. Suppose that we apply a test pattern where A is static 0, B is a rising transition, C is static 0, Given a fault list of two pass delay faults, B, E, F, J, K, and the B, E, L, H, K. Please tell me the robust fault coverage of this test pattern. Now please pause the video and uh, run this example. Now, have you finished? We first run the Six value logic simulation where the output of OR gate is rising and they're falling and the H is static zero. So output K is rising. Consider the first pass delay for B E F J K because all the gates along this path are robustly sensitized. So this pass delay for is robustly detected. However, the second pass delay for B, E, L, H, K was not robustly sensitized because H is static zero. So this pass delay for is not detected. So we detected one out of two pass delay for in the four list. The four coverage is 50%. This is pretty simple, right? But this 50% for coverage is not very representative since there are more than two pass delay four in this circuit. So can we obtain a more representative number? Then we need the non-enumerative method. Now let's introduce the non-enumerative method which does not require any four list. Remember that four coverage is the number of detected faults over the number of total faults. In the non-enumerative method, Pomeres proposed three steps. In step one, we count the number of total faults, so we know the denominator. In step two, we count the number of detected pass delay 4 for a single test pattern. And then in step 3, 
we count the number of detective patch delay for for a whole test set. So after steps two and three, we know the numerator so that we can calculate the fault coverage of the whole circuit. Now starting from the first step, we want to count the number of paths in the circuit. The algorithm is very simple. We count the number of paths backward starting from primary output to primary input. For each primary output, the number is 1. And then we propagate this number from gate output to gate input. For example, for this ISCAS C17 circuit, the numbers at the primary input are both 1. Then we propagate this number to both gate inputs. So we have 1, 1 here, and 1, 1 here. When we have a fan out stem, we just do a summation of the fan out branches. So the number is 2 here. And then we keep propagating this number all the way until we hit the primary input. So the primary input numbers represent the number of paths starting from this primary input. So we have one path starting from this primary input and two, four here, three, one. So we do a summation of all the numbers at the primary input. We know that there are 11 paths in this circuit because each path has two polarity. So totally there are 22 paths delay for in this circuit. Now it's time for you to do an exercise. Please count the number of paths in this simple circuit and the how many paths delay falls are there in the circuit. Now please pause the video and uh, do the exercise. Okay, are you done yet? Starting from the primary output, the number is 1 and the 1 here and the we propagate these numbers all the way to the left and we do a summation here so at primary input we have 2 for B and 2 for C totally there are 5 paths in this circuit each path has 2 path delay falls so totally there are 10 path delay falls in this circuit Now, in step 2, we want to count the number of detected pass delay for for a single test pattern. First, we perform six value logic simulation starting from primary input to primary output. Again, for the same circuit, assume that we apply a test pattern T1 where A is falling transition, B is static 0. C is steady 1, D is falling, H is rising. We can perform a logic simulation all the way to the primary output. And uh, we want to know how many paths did they fall are robustly detected by this test pattern. Please know that although we demo robust example here, the same technique can also be applicable to non-robust sensitization condition. Now continue from the previous example. We want to count the number of robustly sensitized paths backward. So starting from the primary output, if the output gate is robustly sensitized, the primary output is 1. For example, this output gate is robustly sensitized, so the output number is 1. And uh, this output gate is also robustly sensitized, so the number is 1. And then we propagate these numbers to the sensitized gate input. If the gate input is not sensitized, then the number is 0. 
Similarly, we propagate this number to the input, which is robust sense type, and the other input is zero. If we hit a fan out stem, then the number is the summation of two fan out branches. So we can keep doing this from right to the left all the way to primary input. So now the number at the primary input represent the number of detected past day four starting from this primary input. So totally there is one past delay four starting from A and one past delay four starting from D and one past delay four starting from H. There are three pass delay four detected by this test pattern. And then if you want to know which paths are detected, then you need to perform a path tracing starting from the primary input to the primary output. If we trace along the path starting from D, then we can have a robustly detected path delay for D, E, G, J, K. Similarly, we can trace the numbers starting from H. We have another pass delay for H, J, K. And uh, eventually, we have three pass delay faults robustly detected by this test pattern. Now it's time for you to do an exercise. Given this test pattern as our previous quiz, please count backward from primary output to primary input. How many pass delay faults are robustly detected by this test pattern? And what's the full coverage of this test pattern? Remember that we already know that there are 10 pass delay faults in this circuit. Please pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, have you finished? Starting from the primary output, because this gate is robustly sensitized, the so number is 1 here and the 1 here, this is 0 here. I propagate this number 1 and propagate this number 0, 0, and we do a summation. And then this pass is robustly sensitized, so the number is 1 here and 0 here. So totally, we have 1 pass delay 4 detected by this test pattern, which is B, E, F, J, K. Because there are totally 10 pass delay 4, so the full coverage is 10%. Now, this 10% fault coverage is more representative than our previous fault coverage number in the enumerative method because we count the number of total pass delay faults in the whole circuit. But now the problem is what if we have more than one test pattern in the test set? How are we going to accumulate the information? This is a difficult question. We have more than one test pattern in our test set. So every time after we finish simulating a test pattern, we should store some information so that we can accumulate the full coverage. But what kind of information can we store? A very simple idea is that we can store the detected pass delay 4. For example, for test pattern T1, we just simply store 3 PDF. But this is not a very scalable solution because there can be too many paths and our memory usage can explode. So Pomerez proposed a smart alternative we just store the transitions of signal on the detected path. For example, for test pattern T1, 
we stored A falling transition, I rising transition, and L falling transition. Totally, we only need to store nine transition for test pattern T1. We can do this because the number of transition is linear to the circuit size, so we can avoid the memory explosion problem. Now, let's move on to step 3. We want to count the number of detected past delay for for a whole test set. Suppose that after T1, we apply another new test pattern T2 to this circuit. In test pattern T2, A is steady 0, B is steady 0, C is falling, D is steady 1, and H is rising. Again, we repeat step 2 to perform Sixth value largest simulation, and we backtrace the number of detected past delay four from output to input. In this way, we know that there are two past delay four detected by this test pattern T two, and we also record the transition of T two. Now, for the whole test set T1 and the T2, the full coverage can be 3 plus 2 over 22. Is that right? No, this is not right. If we look at the detected pass delay 4 carefully, we found that the pass HJK was actually detected by T1 before. So we cannot count it twice. But since we didn't store the information of PDF, how do we know that the past delay for HJK was detected before? So Pomeroy present a criterion to decide whether a PDF is newly detected. For PDF to be counted as newly detected, it is required that at least one transition did not appear previously in this PDF. For example, for the past CNEGJK, it is newly detected by test pattern T2 because C falling transition did not appear in the transition of T1. However, the past delay for JKH is not newly detected because all of the three transitions already appear in test pattern T1. So this past cannot be counted twice. Now we know that for test set T1, T2, the robust fault coverage is actually three plus 1 divided by 22, which is 18.1%. So, let's conclude this video. We have shown many different logic systems, and the choice of logic system really depends on our requirement. For example, in the robust test pattern generation, we use five-value logic. However, in this video, we use six value logic. And in this video, we presented two for simulation technique. The enumerating method is simple, but the user need to provide a full list. The non enumerative method does not require a full list. It has three steps. In the first step, we count the number of PDF. In the second step, we count the number of detected PDF for a single test pattern, and then we count the number of detected PDF for a whole test set. In this technique, we store the transitions instead of the past delay for, so that our memory usage won't go exponential. Now it's time 
for you to work on FFT. The first question. We propose to store the transitions instead of pass day forward. We mentioned that this technique can result in pessimistic fault coverage. That means that a simulation fault coverage can be lower than the actual fault coverage. So what is the reason? Please show an example. FFT number 2. In this video, we use robust test as an example. Can we apply the sixth value logic to simulate non-robust fault coverage? For example, in this circuit, this NAND gate is non-robustly sensitized. Can we use the sixth value logic? to force simulate this pass delay fault and decide this pass delay fault is non-robustly detected. Thank you for watching.